uh, this next part responding to the concept that deliverance prayer or prayer of anointing will solve the problems of a person or prophetic prayer you know any kind of prayer for a person deliverance prayer prayer of anointing or prophetic prayer will solve the problems of a person now this is quite common among some people that they think that if a pastor prays for me and drive out all the demons then the problem will be solved they think that if uh, there's anointing the, that they're filled with the Holy Spirit then all the problems will be solved or there is prophetic prayer uh, that the person announced some prophetic words from God then all the problems will be solved actually no we need to understand all this prayer just help the person but still the person need to have a constant relationship with God a strong relationship with God and take care of different problems in his life before his whole life is helped so when we drive out demons it doesn't take away the anger and the frustration and the sins of a person when we do a deliverance prayer it it's just temporarily helping the person. The person need to continue to build up the relationship with God and take care of his different problems. And then all the demons will leave. Even after the demons leave, doesn't mean the person, his, his problems are solved. It doesn't mean his problems are solved. They're not solved. The problems are solved when we have a good relationship with God and also when we take care of different problems in life. So we need to learn to take care of different problems in life. Uh, that's, very, that's very important. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. Okay, I'm sorry. Here. Now. Okay. Okay, so we need to understand that someone praying for you doesn't solve our problems. Okay, first, many people think that driving out the spirit of anger will heal the person of the problem of anger. Or driving out the spirit of adultery will heal the person of the problem of adultery. They think that praying for someone will solve all the problem. Now, it won't. Because... The person needs to build up a relationship with God and also take care of uh, his problem. Why, why, he, why does he have anger? Why does he have adultery or lust? Why does he have those problems? He needs to take care of those problems too with the help of God. He has a close relationship with God and he takes care of this problem. Now the driving of the demons will help if a person has demons. And I want to say this, not everyone who has anger has demons. And not everyone who has committed adultery has demons. Not, not necessarily. Now, I, what I mean demons is, mean, what I mean is being filled with demons uh, or possessed with demons. Now, they are influenced or controlled by demons uh, in a certain way. Now, people who, are commit, who commit adultery, they are under the influence of evil spirit but they might not be filled with evil spirit they're just affected by the evil spirit so we need to understand that uh, the demons are not the source of all problem the source of all problem is our relationship with God and how we handle our problems but if the person has demons the demons should be driven out but dri driving out demons doesn't solve his life problems Okay, similarly, some people think that a person with a strong anointing of healing, preaching, prophecy, wisdom, teaching, worship skills, piano skills can pass his anointing to someone. Some people ask me, can you pray for me so I can play the piano? I said, no, it doesn't work like that. You need to practice. You need to learn music. You need to spend time. We cannot just pass this skill to you by praying for you. Now, although it is true that sometimes people can receive anointing, but when they receive the anointing, they still need to work on it. For instance, 
when Carlos and Condia prayed for me, immediately, just a few days after that, when I prayed for people, they experienced the Holy Spirit. But I need to keep this relationship with God. I need to keep loving God and believing that God loves me and have a, a loving relationship with God and take care of my sins, take care of my negative thinking and emotions and, and not to be affected by people. I need to take care of all this problem before I can continue to have this anointing. So just, he just prayed for me one time, will not continue to give me the anointing. I need to keep this relationship. So prayer of anointing doesn't bring that to the person. And now for some people, uh, someone pray for them and they experience the Holy Spirit, but they might not receive the strong anointing. They, and then they need to continue to build the relationship with God and take care of the problems in their life. And then gradually, they can build up the anointing. And then uh, prophecy, you know, some people say, okay, I pray for you and then you can, from now on, uh, hear the voice of God. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes the person can receive the gift, but he still needs to spend time listening to God and put down his burdens and worries and be quiet in front of God in order to receive this, uh, the gift of prophecy strong, stronger in his life. And so some people think that you know, this prayer of anointing can pass this anointing to someone, but it's not true. Three, so many people seek people with strong anointing to pray for them. So some people would go from meeting to meeting. They, they just keep going every, uh, you know, every month. If they know there is a meeting, they will go there and they think that that will build up their spiritual life. I have noticed that when I go to this meeting with strong anointing, in the meeting, the anointing upon me was very strong. But after the meeting, the anointing will start to go down. The next day, it goes down more. So I need to keep the relationship with God in order to keep the anointing. The anointing doesn't stay with us. So just going to meetings doesn't mean we'll continue to have strong anointing. It needs a constant relationship with God. Okay, basically these people think that prayer will solve the problems of a person. They blame the problems on evil spirit and not on their own faults. They minimize the, necess the necessity of a person to work on their problems. So they think that all the problems come from evil spirit. Now evil spirit, if a person has evil spirit inside him, can cause problems. But the problems don't just come from the evil spirit, it comes from his life, his relationship with God and his sins. So driving out the demons won't solve all the problems. And some people blame uh, the evil, just blame the evil spirit and they think that it's the fault of the evil spirit and they just think driving out demons will solve the problem. They didn't realize that their life, uh, you know, they don't have the problem is that in the life they don't have a close relationship with God and also they, they are affected by people or emotions. Evil spirit do cause problems in a person, but driving out the demons will not solve all the problems. The person needs to build up a strong relationship with God to be blessed by God. He also needs to take care of the problems of sins, negative thinking and emotions, and interpersonal problems. So we need to build up the relationship with God and take care of problems of sins. It's very important. All these things block the blessings of God. So he has to take care of his problems of sin, his negative thinking and emotions and interpersonal problem. So all this he has to take care of. Okay? And a person gets evil spirit for different reasons. Problems in a relationship with God. We, if he has problem with in a relationship with God, he can uh, have the evil spirit attack him or they contact with evil spirit or their sins or negative thinking and emotions. This problem has to be resolved and then it is easier to drive out the demons. So when we drive out demons of the person, he has to repent in front of God and build up the close relationship with God and pray more and handle the different problems and then it's easier to drive out the demons. So at least he is willing to take care of the problems. 
Now sometimes it's mutual, uh, that uh, circular, because of his sin problem, he's affected by the demons. Because of his, de uh, the demons, it's hard for him to take care of the sin problem. So it has to start with repentance, and then he start to repent and trust in God and to overcome the sin problem at the same time drive out the demons. If he's cooperative he, with God, he's just saying, God, I need your help. I want to follow you. I want to love you. I want to obey you. Even when he cannot stop the sins right away, when he, he is sincerely willing to change, then God can do things right at the beginning. 7. A person receives a strong anointing from God for different reasons. So how can we receive strong anointing? His strong relationship with God. First, his strong relationship. He, he really loves God. He, he desires God. He appreciates God. His time spent on praying and waiting on God. So how much time he spent on praying and waiting on the Lord? His Bible study. How does he study the Bible? An application of the biblical truth. His dedication to God, how dedicated he is to God, and submission to God and his experience in, in ministry. So all this counts. So if a person doesn't have experience in helping others spiritually, then it's also hard for him to receive a strong anointing. Uh, or this, he doesn't have a good Bible study, and he doesn't apply the biblical truth, uh, or, or he doesn't dedicate his life to God. All this will will uh, make it hard for him to receive the anointing. In the meeting that I received the anointing of Carlos and uh, of God through Carlos and Acondia, there were many people there too. I, I knew these people from my own church. Not all of them keep the anointing after that because they don't appreciate that. Actually, we went to a number of meetings and uh, we really experienced great joy. We all experienced together, but most of them don't have the joy now because they don't hunger for the joy and they don't spend time uh, spend time keeping the joy of the Lord. And then I also uh, keep helping myself how to open my heart, my spirit, so that when I pray, I can sense His presence right away and I can sense the Holy Spirit coming and His joy will flow up from me every time I think of God. Every time I open my spirit, I can sense joy flowing through me. So it takes time to build that up. And receiving prayer from an anointed person does help. It will help. But it's much more important that the receiver will build up a strong relationship with God and dedicate his life to God and submit to God and, and build up experiences in ministry. So it's very important that he... He, he, it's not just a one-time thing. The one-time experience is helpful. It's much more important that the receiver will build up a strong relationship with God and dedicate his life to God, give his life to God, and submit to God and obey God and build up the experience in ministry. Many people received prayer from anointed people and did not grow much in spiritual life or anointing. Now, they receive an uh, prayer of anointing, but they did not grow much. Some people just want to feel the anointing. They just want to experience it. They don't want to grow. And then prayer does not take away our responsibilities. Prayer does not take away our responsibilities. The Bible emphasizes that building up our relationship with God, fulfilling our responsibilities, and dedicating our life to God. So, now, when someone prays for us or when we pray ourselves, it doesn't take away our responsibilities. We still need to build up our relationship with God and fulfill our responsibilities of loving God, loving people, uh, taking care of our families, working, providing for the family, all this responsibility. Now, some people think, I just pray all the time. Now, if that is your calling, it's fine. If you don't have financial problem, you pray all the time, it's fine. Uh, but if you have family responsibilities, you have to fulfill those family responsibilities too. So we need to uh, take up our responsibilities toward God and toward people and ourselves and our life. Okay, so this is uh, 
all for now before lunch and you have an hour's lunch and do do you have an uh, question any question there you can send to me right away you know any anytime you have question please send right away and then we can uh, I can respond at the end okay we'll have a prayer now Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you are a loving God. You can relate to us one to one. Please help us to have uh, the heart of caring for people one to one, to listen to them, to respond to them, to care about them, to help them spiritually, so that we can build up our, our uh, build up other people, so that we can have cell groups in our church, so that it can we can build up other people in the church to serve God so that they don't just do external ministry, but they can do one-to-one -one life ministry on people. Lord, help us to have this heart of listening to people and responding to people and caring for people. Father, we need you. We thank you. We need you. We worship you. We adore you. You are wonderful, God. You are wonderful. You, are, you can help us. Lord, you can help us. Please help our pastors here to learn the way of the cell groups so that we can have cell groups in the church so that we can train members to be cell group leaders that they can care for the other members they can take care of them and help them spiritually so that they can serve God as little pastors and also the other members can also gradually learn to serve God by ministering to each other Lord, help us all to be faithful. The whole army of God, everyone in the church become the army of God. Everyone serves God together, not just the pastor. Lord, give us the wisdom and the willingness to listen to people and care about people and the ability to counsel people and mentor people. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for your great help. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.